Welcome back everyone. Let me just begin by saying a big thank you to those who have been watching my videos and learning with me. I accept any form of feedback, whether it be a like or a dislike or even a comment. So if you appreciate my work, then a like would be greatly appreciated. But without further ado, let's talk about contact lenses. If there's one thing that every contact lens wearer will agree on, it's the fact that it might feel dry or irritated after you have them in for a while. But it doesn't always have to be the case. So today, we'll talk about the ways in which we can reduce dryness and irritation in contact lenses. Let's begin. Starting with allergies. If you suffer from dust and pollen allergies, you will know exactly what I mean. In most cases, these issues are a simple fix. So paying a visit to your optometrist to see if antihistamine eye drops are a viable option for you is definitely worthwhile. These drops are designed to stop your immune cells from overreacting which is exactly the reason why you have reactions such as puffy eyelids and sneezing. Just from taking care of allergic reactions, it can significantly improve your contact lens experience, so don't let it stop you from exploring potential options. So what? Does that mean optometrists can tell whether my irritation is from allergies? Heck yeah, check these bad boys out. When you look under the eyes, these bumpy spikes are called papillae, one of the many signs that manifest themselves during an allergic reaction. It can also present with conjunctivitis, which is when the clear skin surrounding your sclera, the conjunctiva, becomes inflamed. Coupled with blepharitis, which is when the inflammation is carried over to the eyelids. I personally do not suffer from allergies, so I can't tell you exactly how you'd feel, but from the patients I've had, it seems that solving the allergy problem makes a huge difference to their overall experience. Now that we have allergies controlled, let's open up the lens. Before you even touch the lens, it never hurts to put in some eye drops in your eyes beforehand. Not only will it provide moisture to the corneal surface, it will flush out any existing particles such as dead skin cells or any dust. Having small particles stuck in between the eye and the lens will create irritation, so this is an important one. But choosing the right eye drop can sometimes be a nightmare especially with the vast number of different eye drops you can get at the chemist nowadays. For simplicity, you can never go wrong with using this eye drop before inserting your lenses. This is readily available at pharmacies and optometry clinics, and the reason why they are my favourite is because they are compatible with contact lenswear. They are also not single-use disposable eye drops, and yet they are preservative-free, meaning that you can basically use them as much as you need them. It also is perfect for people like me who are quite hopeless at aiming my eye drops. Hilo Fort will shoot a single dropout, so you can even shoot horizontally and still hit the target. And no, they're not paying me to say this. In fact, this is an eye drop I pay my own money for at full price, just to be completely transparent. Now, pick up the lens and put it in your eye. If you wear eye makeup, then remember to do these steps before you do your makeup. Speaking of makeup, I often find people with mascara have little bits floating about on their lens, so use mascara in moderation when wearing contact lenses. You've had your contacts in for a few minutes and immediately you feel irritation, then chances are you may have dry eyes to begin with. There are several types of dry eye, so don't expect a diagnosis from this video but in most cases, it's caused by evaporative dry eye, where the oil layer from your tear film is lacking, causing the aqueous layer to evaporate prematurely. The simplest fix for this is to use a hot compress, as this condition is likely due to the blockage of your meibomian glands. Why do they get blocked in the first place? The waste product produced by the bacteria that consume the meibom from the glands clog them up and it has a higher melting point than our natural body's temperature, so they will solidify. The simplest solution is to apply enough heat for the glands to melt by microwaving a wheat bag and placing it on your eyes for about 10 minutes. The glands will open up, and afterwards, you want to give your eyelids a little massage, squeezing them down on the upper eyelid and also up on the lower eyelid. Do this frequently, sort of like flossing for your dentist. The more you do it, the more effective it'll be. I probably wouldn't do it more than once a day though, 
but not less than once a week. But Antonio, this is old news. Of course I do those. Are there any other things I can do? Perhaps use a contact lens that has a lower water content. Have a close look at the packaging of your contact lenses. At the back, they will always label the material the lens is made of and also the water content. They have to do this to achieve FDA approval. Remember how in my lens parameters video I talked about how we should pay attention to the water content as this determines how dry your eyes will feel after wearing them. In Australia, the Daily's Total 1s take the glory of having the lowest water content at 33%, closely followed by One Day AccuV Oasis with Hydrolux at 38%. The AccuV Oasis has the versatility of correcting astigmatism, whereas the Total 1s cannot correct it. However, water content isn't everything. In some cases, I get patients who complain that the lenses with low water content are much harder to handle, preventing them from wearing them in the first place. So for contact lens beginners, low water content may not be the answer. Not to mention the premium price tags these lenses usually present with. I myself am using both the AccuV Oasis for astigmatism and the MyDays for astigmatism. I generally use the My Days for sport, where I'll be wearing them for only hours at a time, and with Oasis, if I know I'll be wearing them for a long period of time. But let me know what you think. Which contact lenses have you tried and had success with? I wish the Oasis transitions would make it compatible with astigmatism, so I can try them out myself on sunny days outdoors. But unfortunately, they don't have a toric design yet. But before we go off on a tangent, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Again, if you appreciate my work, then I'd be greatly thankful if you could press the like for this video as it helps the YouTube algorithm know that people appreciate my craft. If not, then I guess I have some work to do. If you learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.